Welcome back, part two, making our small aluminum fender here using hand tools. Part one, we shaped this thing out, we did some metal finishing around the edges, got that nice. Now we're getting ready to put in our beading detail in the center. If you missed part one, go back, check it out, get the speed, come on back, catch up. So, let's get started. So first thing I have to do is I have to set these body lines. Um, there's a little bit to think about in the theory behind why I'm doing it, but it, to get into all that would just be too long for this video. To set in these lines, I'm going to use a tool um, I can never use in metal shaping, which is a ball bean hammer. Um, for most things, they're just too sharp uh, to do anything productive, usually more damage than good. But because we're working in such a tight space between the two lines, it's going to work out good. Instead of swinging into it, which would not be accurate, accurate enough, I'm going to use a rubber mallet. And basically, you'll see me just holding the ball peen hammer right where I need it, hanging up the rubber mallet. Okay? So, let's get started. We're going to set the first line, which is the outer line. We're going to set that first, and then we'll do the inner line. And then we'll really start to see uh, this beading detail take shape. Top line set. Remember, you always destroy the panel before it gets better. Now we're going to set the inside line. To get this inside line set, we need it sitting on the sandbag. So we have to manipulate it a little bit to get the sandbag up in there. We're going to set that down and then we'll really start to see this bead detail take shape. set our lines for the beading detail. Looks like we pretty much destroyed our panel. That's okay. That's always how it looks. Um, ball peen hammer is a little rough on the panel. I do have a hammer that's better off for doing this, but most people won't have one of those to start. So we'll do it with the ball peen. We're initially setting the lines, don't worry about if they're not perfect. Now we're going to do hammer and dolly work and we're going to bring that right where we need it. I've set up my uh, dolly here in the vise. Always start off using a rounded edge on your dolly and uh, try not to make a crisp line off the, bit, off the bat. At the end, we can go back and tighten everything up, make everything look sharp. All right, so I'm gonna be using my uh, body hammer again and I'm gonna have my panel on the dolly and this edge is gonna be right on my line. And I'm gonna be working this way and occasionally you might see me hit it this way and basically I'm working to take all this rounded material I created and put it right on that corner. And we're just gonna do a little bit at a time, go real slow in the beginning, um, 
so you get everything set right where you want it. Okay, see that line setting a little bit already? Let's keep continuing right around. Kind of screwed up a little bit there. When I was hitting it, my dolly scooted a little bit away from the line. And you could see I brought up this section that I had previously hammered down. Not a big deal. Um, things happen. So I'm going to just put on the sandbag quick with the ball peen hammer right in that corner and bring that line back down. Use the ball peen hammer, took that corner down um, real quick. And then we're back at it. Okay, so we've roughly set that line in place. Now we're going to set in uh, this lower line. What I'm going to be doing is setting in this bottom line even better. And also um, it'll bring out the top line a little bit. So I'm going to be setting my panel so this dolly is on the top line. And I'm going to be striking down on the bottom line. Basically bumping that metal and setting more of a transition between the two lines. And when doing this, um, I'm going real light and I'm trying to stay very even with my hammer strikes. If I start hammering away, creating dips and divots, it's just more work for me to clean up later. So I'm going to be going nice and, nice and slow and methodically with this one.
Okay. So it looks rough, but we got our lines really set in. Up here where I screwed up a little bit before, uh, we're gonna have to do some work there. That's all right. Okay, so now let's smooth this out a little bit. We're gonna use the dolly, flip over our panel. Gonna be continuing to use this hammer um, between the both sides. I need something, again, the ball peen hammer might work for you here, but you just need something small because if I use something with a big surface area, when I get to the curve, it's like the outside edges of the hammer will be hitting, but not the center, and that's no good. So. going to go through and I'm going to level out the center a little bit. corner. I'm basically going to put my dolly right on the outside edge of the line and just knock down uh, that high spot in between the two lines. Okay. All right, there's our beading detail roughly set in. Spots a little high right here. There we go. Now we'll start cleaning it up and making it look like it's supposed to be there. All right, so we're gonna work on cleaning up the inside of the bead right here. I actually went through this once. I thought I was filming and I wasn't. Um, so we'll go through it again for the second round. To do this, um, grabbing a different dolly here. You could continue to work with the dolly we're using right here, um, but this one just look, works a little bit better. It's a little bit more squared off. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to lean the panel on the corner of this dolly so this flat is actually sitting right on the inside of the bead detail. And I'm gonna be using the small faced hammer and just planching that out. Basically the same thing we did all over the panel, just in that small area. Um, this is a tricky one. Uh, that's a, these are very small walls on the edge of this bead. Um, something that's wider, much easier. But let's get to it.
Okay, now we're going to use the same dolly. We're going to work on the center section. A little bit of work up in this section using the rounded side of the hammer. Just like we did in part one around the outside edges, we'll get some machinist die, put it on in here, then we can pick out our high spots, low spots, and start planishing this a little bit further, get it to a nice finish. What I like to do here is just brush on a little bit by hand, then grab a paper towel and spread it out, just like I did in part one. Don't need it, super dark, just enough to show me some contrast. I'm going to use a uh, sanding block just because it has these narrow edges here. Um, this is 120 grit paper and we'll use this to get started with picking out our high spots and low spots. So just lightly go over these edges. So Got some work to do, not too bad overall. I'm not gonna worry about this outside edge until the very end, just about. Um, we'll get the inside cleaned up first. And before I even really get to the center section, we'll do the hard part first, which is gonna be this uh, narrow edge here on the bead. So back to the hammer and dolly and get this cleaned up.
The side's looking pretty good. It's got some light hammer marks, some ripples in it still. That's good for now. So jump over, I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll address these tight sections in the corner and this middle section. Got these two inside edges cleaned up. Still, uh, still work to do there, they're not perfect, but they're good enough for now. So I'm gonna start work on the center section. What I'll probably end up doing is, once we get things planched out about halfway, I'll make some nice straight lines, and then I'll show you guys how to manipulate our edges just a little bit, get them on those lines, keep everything nice and straight. But for now, we'll uh, continue on with what we're doing, and I'll planch the center section out. I'll continue to use the small-faced hammer. Maybe I might be able to get my slapper in there a little bit. It might be just a hair too wide. Realistically, for something like this, you want to use the widest tool you have um, that still comfortably fits in the space. I'm going to go back to this dolly um, because this section is flat. We don't have a compound curve going this way and this way on this, this section. It's just a flat bend. So it's going to work out great. So back in the sandbag, just like that. And I'll start with this hammer. I don't think the slapper is going to work. So we'll just use this and we'll get working. Got the center of this panel feeling pretty good. It's overall pretty even. Just has a lot of little uh, highs and low spots in there, little hammer marks. What I decided to do in this section is I'll show another technique that you can use um, to get these low spots up and the high spots down called uh, a pick and file technique. So generally, I prefer to use a hammer, slapper, and dolly to even everything out, but sometimes in tight spaces like this, um, especially if you have you know, plenty of material that you're not worried about filing it thin or anything like that, um, a pick and file technique works out really well too. So I just put another coat of dye on it. My file fits in here. You can use a sanding block too, but like I think I mentioned in part one, I think the file does a much better job of showing everything. So, hit it real quick. Scrape it pretty good so it shows up better on the camera as well. Alright, so if you can see some of our low spots, still dark. Pick and file techniques, real simple. Just pick out a low spot which what I like to do is I get my fingers um, because without looking you pinch pretty accurately. So I'll pick out a low spot, we'll say right here, pinch my fingers, flip it over, put it on the sandbag. You want the sandbag to be sitting flush against where you're hammering. So 
pick out my low spot, flip it over, take the rounded end of my hammer and bring my low spot up, lightly with the file, and continue on. The trick to this is go kind of slow. You don't want to bring up the low spot too high. Then, you have to, then you're filing off more material than you need to be, or you're uh, tapping it back down. So nice and easy. They make a tool called a bullseye pick for this. Um, I have one, but for the sake of doing these videos, the hand tools, we'll, we'll leave it out for now. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to do the pick and file. Um, through the rest of this, try to get nice and cleaned up, and then uh, we'll finish up on these edges and hopefully have the panel looking pretty good. As you can see, I did end up uh, using the slapper a little bit. It is almost exactly the width of that inside flat. I didn't think I'd get in there, but uh, it did. I just wanted to be really careful that I didn't end up hitting the sides too much and then screw up all the progress I did earlier. So this is looking pretty good. Feels pretty good. A little bit of imperfections in there, but I think that's good enough for uh, for right now, brush it out a little bit so you guys can see at home. Okay, so the next part I'm going to work on is up here in these corners. I don't know if the camera really picks it up, but this corner I have just a little bit deeper from this one, um, from when I screwed up earlier, planishing this out. So what I'm gonna have to do is put the dolly back in the vise, and I'm gonna have the corner of the dolly right here on this outside corner, and I'm gonna use my rounded hammer and hit right down here. And what that's gonna do is push this section down while holding this section up. I already did my stretching in the beginning, so I'm not really looking to stretch too much, just kind of move that metal, uh, the arrangement of that area of metal and push it down a little bit. So I'll get on that right now and then I'll work on planching out this little section. It looks like I can get my hammer right in that area, but these corners we'll just have to do the best we can with the rounded section. So just jump over to the vise and get on that part.
top corners. Doing pretty good. They still have some real light hammer marks in there, but I think those are probably just, you can hardly feel them. I think those will just come right out when we do the final finishing on it, um, brushing it or polishing it. So I'm not really worried about those in there too bad. So now I'm gonna work my way down these two main body lines and work on straightening those out. The way I'm gonna do that is first I'm gonna grab a straight edge, I'll put another Sharpie line on each side to make sure um, they're nice and straight. And then I'll go through with the hammer and dolly or the slapper and dolly and work out those lines. The way I'll adjust them is for example, if the line waves a little bit in this direction, I'll make sure the edge of my dolly is right on the Sharpie line where the line needs to be. And if the line is pushed this way, I'll hammer on this side and I'll work to bring this side over this edge back onto the line. If the line's this way, again, I'll make sure the edge of my dolly is where it's supposed to be and I'll planish on this side a little bit more and I'll work that edge right onto the line. Um, sounds a little wonky when I explain it, but as you watch me do it, you'll see there's nothing really to it. And then once these surfaces become more perfect, the line really starts to pop and we'll start to see the work that we did here. I've gone and I've added some fresh layout fluid along this edge, hit the top of the file so we can see the work we have to do. And then I grabbed the Sharpie, made a couple of reference lines so we can get these lines nice and straight. Now I'm gonna work along this top edge with the slapper and dolly and the vise and clean up this top surface right along the edge and bring everything to those Sharpie lines. Take a look at what we did with this edge here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. It's kind of heavy brushing with the 120, I think on the camera kind of hides the body lines a little bit, but it's looking pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit of work to do here and uh, we'll get on the other side. <clears throat> For the final step, I've got this round post dolly back in and got a small file. Could use a large one too. Um, if that's all you got, but small one works a little better. And I'm just doing a little bit of final finishing on the inside of these edges. Now we have the top line crisp. Press this up, you can see I already did this side, it's looking good. Just a little bit of work to do here on this side. So I'm gonna go through and just very gently um, with a small hammer, just work out a couple of these little low spots. I think we'll be good to go.
got the inside edges file finished just the way we did on the rest of the panel. Now I'm going to uh, give it a quick sand with some 120 grit just because we have some small file marks left around the panel and then we'll hit it with some 220 and that will smooth it out and I think it will give the camera a better look at the work we did here and we'll see how it goes. Got some 220 here. This is 320. And finally, a little red 3M pad. Quick look at it with a brush finish. Not too bad. A couple of little ripples in it. Just a little bit more metal finishing, take that out. This is gonna be a finished piece. I got this part, I found a ripple or something I didn't like. I just go back in that one little area, same kind of metal finishing, hammer dolly, file, pick and file, get it out. But I think for demonstration purposes, looking pretty good. So I think I'm gonna throw it on the buffer quick and see what we get out of it. Just a quick run on the buffer. I think it's looking pretty good. That's a wrap. Not too bad of a result. Came out pretty good. These are the tools I used to get this done. Now I understand if you're new, you're just starting out, it still kind of seems like a lot. My best advice to anyone getting started is to go slow with buying tools. Don't drop a ton of money in the beginning. Get some basics. Maybe a body hammer, decent dolly, nylon mallet, and a sandbag. You can do a lot. Whole motorcycle front fender, make with those tools. Learn these basics, get really good at them. These are just foundational skills that we used here. But you're going to carry them with you as far as you practice doing this kind of work. This motorcycle tank skin I made a while back. This front knee indent, done exactly the same as how we put the bead in the fender. The shape up here in the tank, same way. Stretching, planishing. All basic skills that will take you really far. So, I hope you learned something. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. If there's anything I glossed over you want to hear some more about, let me know, leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. I'm thinking about making some more of these. I would love uh, some suggestions for topics. Check out the Instagram, Catskill MTN Customs. Maybe I'll see you next time. Thanks again.